Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and it's time for another edition of Your Bible Questions Answered. Today is Saturday, the 3rd of February, 2024, and our question today is one that we get about every single day, and that is of the United States and Bible prophecy, and the answer is no, and we're going to look at this. Now, in our book, 25 Signs We're Nearly In, what we have done is first and foremost listed, I think it's number nine, uh, sign number nine, the different nations that will invade Israel in the last days, and there's a number of them, Iran, Turkey, of course, Russia is the leading nation. Then the next sign is the nations that won't be involved, which is like Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, Egypt, and the such like. But then there's something else, and this is question number 11. Someone is missing, conspicuous by their absence, and here's how we uh, list our sign. No superpower will intervene on Israel's behalf when they are invaded. Ezekiel 38, 39, we find that. And so the subheading is, of course, something will happen to the United States. All right, let's look at this. Not only will there be certain nations in the geographical area around Israel that will not participate in the invasion of Ezekiel 38, 39, there's something else missing from the battle. Namely, there's no superpower who will rally to Israel's side. We can make the following observations about the scenario that the Bible gives. First of all, we want to look at the evil thought of Gog. This is Ezekiel 38, 10 to 12. The Bible explains the motivation of Gog, the leader of this last day's coalition. Remember, Gog is not a name, it's a title. Thus says the Lord God, On that day thoughts will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil scheme and say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will fall upon the quiet people who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls and having no bars or gates, to see spoil and carry off plunder, to turn your hand against the waste places that are now inhabited, and the people who are gathered from the nations, who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell at the center of the earth. That's Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 10 to 12 from the ESV. Now, interesting, we see an evil thought comes across the mind of this leader. When he has this thought, and here's the key, there is seemingly no hesitation whatsoever on his part to carry out his plan. In other words, when he gets the idea for this plan, he doesn't hesitate in the least to do it. In other words, once this thought comes into his mind, he is not worried about any, anyone intervening. And this is what hit me a few years ago when I was supposed to do a talk for the first time. I'd ever done this subject on the Ezekiel 38-39 invasion uh, for I had an hour-long talk I was going to give. And what hit me was, wait a minute, this personage... It gets this evil thought. He has a coalition of nations he puts together, but he doesn't even give a second thought of anyone intervening on the side of Israel, meaning Israel is basically isolated at that particular time. So the obvious question is, where is the United States of America? All right. And so here's kind of our headings. Number one, the weak response from nations in the vicinity of Israel. In fact, the only response we are told from any other nation comes from Sheba and Dedan, that's the modern-day Gulf states, including Saudi Arabia, they are merely protesting. In other words, they are not intervening militarily on the side of Israel. And, of course, there'll be no intervention by other nations. Finally, as the invasion occurs, nothing is said about any nation coming to the aid of Israel. Nothing is said about any other nation protesting or wishing to help to send any help to Israel. To sum up, Israel is entirely left on its own when this attack takes place. So the obvious conclusion is, where we live now in history, something is going to happen to the United States. If the scenario assumes that something will happen to the United States where it cannot or will not come to the aid of Israel. While we don't know exactly what will take place, there are a number of possible scenarios. Number one, the United States does not exist. That is a possibility. While frightening to think of, it is possible the United States will no longer exist. Either some type of nuclear attack, terrorist attack, plague could make the United States a wasteland. Can it happen? Yes, it certainly can. Will it happen? Well, nobody really knows. However, we should not rule it out as being beyond the realm of possibilities. If the United States was not in the picture at all. This would explain why, the, why this leader, Gog, has not had a second thought about invading Israel. So it is possible that we will not exist any longer as a nation. Um, I don't think it's likely, but it's not impossible. Okay. Number two possibility, the United States does not have the capacity to get involved. This is a more likely scenario that the United States has reduced its military force to such a degree or that it is so spread thin around the world that it would not be possible for it to come to the aid of Israel in any meaningful way. 
In other words, while possibly be willing, possibly being willing to help the uh, Israelis, the U.S. will find itself in a position where it could not help them. Now, there could be other factors that would not allow the U.S. to become involved, but whatever the case may be, the USA may be willing to help Israel, but for some unstated reason, they aren't able. For example, what if we get in a war with China and all our assets are in the Pacific, then we're not going to pull them out, you know, to fight uh, some war in the Middle East on behalf of Israel when they're not attacking directly us or a real asset that we need, because China, of course, today with Taiwan, that is where, um, you know, our action is, our real interest lies in today's world. So anyway, that is uh, possibility number two, we like to, but we can't, or possibility number three, the United States is not willing to get involved. Sadly, it is possible that the United States, while having the capacity to intervene on Israel's behalf, just does not wish to. For whatever reason, America chooses to stay out of this battle. Of course, this would cause a horrific judgment by the Lord upon the USA. So three basically, three basic possibilities we have. Number one, we don't exist at the time, so we're non, non-issue, uh, or don't exist as a superpower. We don't have the capacity to get involved. Number two, again, lack of superpower status where we couldn't get involved. Or number three, we're just not willing. We've got other um, places that we're interested in. The U.S. has given up on Israel and the Middle East. So any one of those three will work. But here's the warning to the United States. As we observed in sign number two, the Bible made it clear to those nations, and this is sign number two of our 25 signs, as uh, nations have done to Israel, so God will do to them. And we talk about this in the book. And so this is what we're referring to, sign number two of our 25 signs are near the end. And sign number two, God made it clear that those nations which attempt to undermine Israel will be punished by God. We listed five ancient people, Amorites, Moabites, Amalekites, Philistines, and the Ammonites. They no longer exist because of their repeated attempts to destroy Israel. God pronounced judgment against them, specifically here in scripture, and none of these nations exist anymore as distinct people groups, all right, because they attempted to destroy Israel. So the supernatural protection of Israel promised by God has never been rescinded, never. Now, this will be particularly true in the last days when Israel is back in the land like they are now, as the Bible has predicted. According to scripture, Israel must exist at the very end, and they must exist as a modern state in their ancient homeland, as we say also, well, with the city of Jerusalem part, a uh, united city of Jerusalem part of the modern state of Israel. Now, what we say here, we can only hope and pray that this has not become the situation in the United States. In other words, turning our back on Israel. If indeed it eventually does happen, the United States will be judged by God. There is no doubt about this. Now, God will intervene on behalf of of Israel. This is the key. One final thing we should mention, Israel does indeed have someone who will intervene on their behalf. See, when this leader Gog attacks, he figures there's no superpowers going to help him, uh, no uh, country in the in the vicinity, you know, you don't have the Gulf states or Egypt, no one's going to help Israel. So Israel's on its own. Well, there's something they don't think about, and that is the living God, you know, that's going to intervene. <laughs> Here we read in Ezekiel 39, verses 1 and 4 to 6. The Bible explains that there is someone who does intervene. As for you, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. You will fall dead on the mountains of Israel, you and all your troops and, and the people who are with you. I will give you as food for every kind of bird and every kind of wild beast. You will fall dead in the open field, for I have spoken, declares the sovereign Lord. I will send fire on Magog and those who live securely in the coastlands. Then they will know that I am the Lord. That's Isaiah, uh, excuse me, Ezekiel 39, verse 1 and verses 4 to 6. So scripture records that the Lord completely destroys, completely destroys the invading armies. Hence, at the end of the day, it's God himself who will fight for Israel, defeat the enemies, even though no other nation will take up arms. Now, one final thing, and this is key. The Bible is all about Israel, not about America. Now, uh, listen to this quotation here. The vast American republic does not mention distinctly in prophecy, nor are the powers of Europe except to announce their doom, while Israel is constantly before the mind of Jehovah through the sacred scriptures. While Israel was inseparably bound upon the fate of the mightiest empires of antiquity, as Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon, and so in the future, as the chosen hand for inflicting God's righteous judgments, it will become the center of his earthly government and the source of earthly blessings to the nations when Jesus comes to reign. 
All right. So the point is, America is not mentioned in Scripture. Israel is mentioned, and they're going to be at the center of God's earthly government at the time of the end. Now, what's interesting about this, this was written by a man named James Brooks in his book, Maranatha, the Lord Cometh, <laughs> was written in the year 1889. 1889, it was recognized that not only Israel would come back to its ancient homeland, become a modern state, but American is not mentioned. We're not we, we don't, uh, are, we're not a player in last day's Bible prophecy, lest we forget. It's God has given a timepiece for time and eternity, the nation Israel. The nation is the hour hand, the city of Jerusalem is the minute hand, the temple mount is the second hand. Okay, so this is from our book, 25 Signs, we're near the end, and we've done uh, about three signs, 9, 10, and 11, all deal with Ezekiel 38, 39, and invasion. But the United States, for whatever reason, this is the bottom line, we're not a player in last day's Bible prophecy. And sadly, we see probably how it's going to happen. We're destroying ourselves from within. We're, you know, well, we're just not a player today. Uh, like we say all the time on breaking news, uh, none of our enemies fear us and our friends don't trust us anymore. Very sad. But this is a situation the Bible predicts because the United States is conspicuous by its absence in last day's Bible prophecy. I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching this edition of Your Bible Questions Answered. Until next time, may the Lord richly, richly bless.